Monopoly was a pretty big board game since it was introduced almost 90 years ago. And in 1990, where you know or not, just, well, 55 years after its debut, it became a game show. Kind of short-lived, but I think a pretty fun one, though. So prepare yourselves as I talk about Monopoly today on the Wide World of Game Shows. Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews presents Wide World of Game Shows. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Duol, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Back again with another episode of the Wide World of Game Shows. Now, as you may recall, a week ago I talked about the game show based on a popular board game, and that was Scrabble. Well, we somehow got a game show based on another popular board game. It came out in 1990, but it was short-lived, though, because it aired as a replacement during the summer of 1990. And it was from the man who gave us Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy. And it's the game where you have to, well, buy popular, well, places and what have you, and chances, and community chest, and of course, boardwalk. You know why I'm talking about. It's Monopoly, and I'm going, to, and here we go with my talk about it, as I bring to you the game show of Monopoly. Monopoly was a game show based on the board game of the same name, originally done by Parker Brothers, before it got, well, absorbed into Hasbro. It originally premiered on ABC in the summer of 1990, where it aired alongside the Super Jeopardy game show, now, this was kind of short-lived, but in ways it was just like the actual game, but with just some fun stuff added. I'll tell you as I talk about it. Okay, so... Monopoly. Yes, it ain't gonna be easy to talk about this. But anyway... The show was produced by Merv Griffin Enterprises, along with King World, who of course was currently distributing Griffin's other hits, which were Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy, and of course, um, his other recent series, and that was the short-lived Ruckus. The show's host was former Jeopardy contestant Mike Riley, and Charlie O'Donnell, who was the announcer of Wheel of Fortune at the time, was the announcer. They had a co-host, there were three separate ones, Kathy Davis, Kathy Carges, and Michelle Nicholas. The show premiered on ABC in June of 1990, as I mentioned, along with Super Jeopardy, a special tournament edition of Jeopardy. Now then, now there actually was a pilot episode that was taped before this and was hosted by Peter Tamarkin, who most people know him best as the host of Pressure Luck. And after that was filmed, Riley was selected as host. The pilot was, but the pilot episode was produced for syndication, but couldn't gain clearances. Now you can actually find the full episode there in two separate parts on YouTube. But for now, let's talk about the actual show. Now, there's three contestants, each represented by a color, red, gold, and green. In the first round, contestants attempted to take control of the eight groups of colored properties on a giant Monopoly board. To do so, they had to solve crossword-style clues. The first letter of each answer was given to the contestants, and each side of the four-sided board referred to as blocks, with the block containing the five properties between the go to jail corner and go referred to as the high rent district had different starting letter for clues. Each clue was a toss up and answering correctly one money equal to the value of the property from sixty dollars 
from Mediterranean Avenue to $400 for boardwalk. Answering incorrectly deducted that value from the contestant score. In the event that all three contestants failed to answer the clue, the property value was cut in half and another clue was read. Each color group, referred to as a monopoly, had to be controlled by one of the contestants before play moved on to another. Once a contestant controlled a monopoly, the total monetary value of its properties was added to his or her score. The lowest monopoly value was $120, which was for Mediterranean and Baltic Avenues. The highest was $920 for the three property monopoly consisting of Pacific, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania Avenue. If the properties in a monopoly end up under the control of multiple contestants, a series of toss-up clues were played between them to determine ownership. <clears throat> a contestant who owned two properties in a group of three had to give one correct answer in order to take full control, while the contestant who owned the third had to give two. If all three contestants each owned one property, the first to give a correct answer challenged one point and took over the property of the other. And the remainder of the showdown followed the two contestant format. An incorrect answer on the initial toss up forfeited that contestant's property, which was then awarded to one of the others through a second toss up. In the case of the Mediterranean, Inner Baltic, and Park Place, and or boardwalk monopolies being split between two contestants, the first to answer a clue correctly took control. Now then, then they go to the big money round. During the commercial break, following the completion of the first round, the contestants used the money they had earned to build houses and hotels on their properties. These cost $50 and $250 respectively. Regardless of the property's position on the board, and contestants had to build evenly within a color group. The number of houses and or hotels on property determined the amount of its rent, which was used as the value of its clues. Once the contestants' construction purposes had been revealed and the corresponding costs deducted from their scores, the big money round began. An indicator light started at go and moved clockwise around the board, according to the total of two oversized dice rolled by the show's hostess. Every contestant received $200 bonus whenever the indicator light passed or landed on go. If a property was landed on, Charlie O'Donnell called out its rent value and Riley read a clue to the contestant who owned it. A correct response added the rent value to his or her score. A miss incurred no penalty but allowed either of the opponents to buzz in under the same rules as the first round with an incorrect answer deducting from that contestant's score. Squares other than properties affected the game as follows. Now, for the utilities, which are the electric company and the waterworks, a toss-up clue was as worth 100 times the toll on the dice. For railroads, if the indicator light landed on one of the four railroads, contestants got the chance to ride a particular railroad to a monopoly and initiate a hostile takeover. <coughs> Excuse me. A toss-up was asked, and the first contestant to answer the clue correctly chose one of his or her opponent's monopolies to take over. The indicator light then moved to the first property in the chosen monopoly, and the contestant trying to take it over had to answer a series of clues unopposed, one for each property. Every correct answer advanced the indicator light to the next property in line. If the contestant answered all the clues correctly, he or she won control of the monopoly. Its combined value was added to his or, or her score, and any houses or hotels built on it became his or her property. A wrong answer ended the takeover attempt and the contestant had to pay the corresponding rent to the owner of the monopoly based on where the indicator was when the wrong answer was given. The chance and community chest when that when you land on that a card was drawn from the appropriate deck and its instructions, bonuses, fines, movement were followed. Tax basis. Landing on income tax deducted 10% from every contestant's score, while luxury tax deducted $75. Free, for free parking, a toss-up was asked, and the first contestant to answer correctly won $500 plus all money collected in taxes and or fines since the last correct free parking response. 
if you hit go to jail, it moved to the the end of care moved to the in jail space, and each contestant lost two hundred and fifty dollars. The second round was planned until time was called. At this point, all houses and hotels were sold back to the bank at their original purchase price, and the money was credited to the contestants who owned the properties, regardless of who had originally built them. The contestant with the highest toll won the game, kept his or her money, and advanced to the bonus round, called Once Around the Board. <coughs> now, the champion tried to complete one full clockwise circuit of the board within five rolls, Without, while staying out of jail, the contestant first chose four spaces, one each on the maroon, orange, and red-yellow sides, and two on the green-blue side to become go-to-jail spaces. The original go-to-jail space remained on the board for a total of five. The champion started at go and rolled the dice to move around the board. The contestant could quit and take $100 per space at well, passed after each successful roll. Rolling doubles awarded an extra roll. The champion won 25000 for passing go without running out of rolls, or 50000 for landing on go exactly. If the champion ran out of rolls, or lands in lands on one of the go-to-jail spaces, he or she forfeited the bonus money, and the, and the game ends. Yes, the good and the bad. Anyway... Now it'd be tough to find this show on YouTube. They used to find I used to find some episodes on there, but not much. You can find it if someone has it, and what have you. But even so, after twelve episodes were produced in air, plus the unaired pilot for syndication, the show ended in September of nineteen ninety. There was also a Welsh version of this show, which came out. A couple of years later, and actually, host Mike Riley competed on Jeopardy a year before this came out. He later worked as a waiter before being selected by Merv Griffin to perform as a contestant on the pilot for Monopoly. And after that was taped, Riley was selected as host. But however, again, as I've said already, you can find the full episode of the pilot in two separate parts on YouTube. So, if you're interested, check it out. Now, again, it'd be tough to find uh, this, but even so, Monopoly is, pretty, is a pretty good show, but I consider it to be a little underrated and what have you. Uh, Anyway, I'll give you a look at a little shot. Now, I'm sorry this isn't the best quality, but this is what the set of Monopoly actually looks like. After its run, Monopoly has never been seen again, not even on Game Show Network. Now, Monopoly has been seen on Game Shows a few times. It later had a little bit of a fun bit added to Family Game Night that aired on the Hub Network, now Discovery Family Channel, in the in the 2010s. In 2015, Monopoly came back to the scene in March of 2015 in Monopoly Millionaires Club. But I, if if you'd like for me to talk about that show, you can let me know, uh, and I'll and I'll talk about it in a future episode, which was good and what have you, but it did kind of go downhill a wee bit later on, but. Again, I'll get to that another time. But anyway, Monopoly's pretty good. You can also find, if you can't find full episodes, there's clips and what have you, in case you'd like to check them out. So, that's all I can tell you. <coughs> Excuse me again. I'm just a little under the weather. So, what did you think of the Monopoly game show? Have you ever seen this short-lived game? If you have, let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And we will do another episode next, maybe next month or so. I don't have any more for this month, but maybe next month you might get some more. We'll see. And we'll have another video coming up soon.
okay? So, if you like this, consider checking out these other Wide World Game Shows episodes. Excuse me. In the upper left-hand corner is the episode on Wheel of Fortune. The upper right-hand corner is the episode on Jeopardy. And the bottom left-hand corner is the previous Wide World of Game Shows episode on Scrabble. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc. As well as the wide world of game shows. Then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.